Now, gentlemen, uh, you have a date with a very special girl this evening. Now, firstly, uh, you go along and give yourself a very good washing and uh, dickying up, and you give yourself a proper shave. Now, there's no point in shaving part of the face and leaving the rest. You go ahead and you shave the whole lot off. There's a class for young farmers two afternoons a week in the little town of Glenamaddy, County Galway. The subjects are all very practical, farm management and administration, the care of livestock, modern farming methods, the use of machinery, and how to take a girl on a date. Jim is dressed up in casual wear, sweater. This type of uh, dress would be okay now for going to uh, sports wear or out even, you know, for a walk or anything casual, but definitely not uh, in such a manner as to take a girl out in. Now, the next gentleman will call up uh, sportswear, for example. Now, sportswear is quite an order, provided it is new and uh, becoming. Now, usually sportswear, we get a trend of beige, brown, and such colours going through it. Now, the usual is to wear uh, contrasting shoes of brown or tan or such like to tone into it. Now, this is quite also in order for wearing out on a date. Or also, uh, Seamus, we might have you up now, uh, a suit, a black or dark suit, is uh, very much in order also. It also looks very dressy. And usually, to go into this, we've got a white shirt and... This class is held in the vocational school at Glenamary, usually draw an attendance of between 20 and 25 attentive young men. They're at their most attentive whenever the subject is girls and how to deal with them, how to dress for an evening out, how to escort the young lady of your choice how to behave when treating her to a meal in a restaurant. Now, here's our soup plate, and we eat our soup with the spoon. Now, you all know the soup spoon. It is a round spoon of this nature, usually this size, and you just carry on. You tilt the soup plate away from you until you have the soup eaten. And you just pass to the outsider, it might seem that all this is rather a waste of time. Surely nature has already done enough to ensure that young men will seek out and enjoy the company of young ladies. But in rural Ireland, and especially in the West, where year after year the number of marriages continues to fall, nature needs all the help she can get. Anything that helps to bring young people together, that breaks down the barriers of shyness and awkwardness and reserve, is not only useful, but essential if the West isn't to become completely stripped of its population. The case of Jimmy Glynn was in many ways typical of what happens to a young man who grows up on a small farm in the West. As long as his parents were alive, marriage wasn't really a practical proposition for him. Even though he knew he'd one day own the farm, it had only a small house with no place for a second woman. So Jimmy became more or less used to the idea of remaining unmarried indefinitely. He inherited the farm after the death of his parents, but at that time he was already a middle-aged man and life seemed to have passed him by. He had become set in his ways, used to the routine of the solitary life, setting off to get his groceries after the day's work on the farm, cycling back again to the empty, lonely house where there was no one anymore to cook a meal for him. No one even to greet him, except his dog. Inside the house, he'd left a saucepan of water on the fire for the potatoes. Jimmy always used instant potatoes, poured straight from the packet into the saucepan. Behind the house, he had a whole field full of potatoes, but after a day's work, he was too tired to start peeling and washing them. So he lived on tea and bread, tin food and instant potato. A typical country bachelor. But where had all the young girls gone? They'd gone to Dublin, many of them, to take jobs in the civil service and in the semi-state bodies and in the big commercial concerns. The city is very attractive at first with its crowds and its activity and its air of constant excitement. There are plenty of opportunities for a girl from the country who's had a good convent education 
and obtain her inter or leaving cert. At the same time, the city is causing an imbalance in the pattern of population. Too many unmarried girls in Dublin, too many unmarried men in the country. But this is something that the country girl is not conscious of, at least not at first. Oh, completely different. Completely different atmosphere whatsoever. Plenty of scope, plenty of variety, independence, of course, and um, temptations, lots of temptations. Oh, I love it, yes. I really love it because um, there's always something to do, always some place to go. It's very, very different, really. There's much more to do, much more people to meet. And you get very, very used to it all together. Well, if you're in a flat with a crowd of girls, it can be fun, but if you're on your own, it could be lonely at times. Life is much quicker here in Dublin, but um, I prefer the country to live in permanently, but I like working in Dublin. There's a terrible difference. Um, the first one down, the people are so much different and everything. And um, they say there's social life in Dublin, but I don't really think there is, at least I haven't found it anyway, you know. In the flats and bedsitters of rat mines or drum chondra, the city can suddenly become a very lonely place. When this happens, do the country girls ever think that they might be better off at home, living on a farm, married to a farmer? I wouldn't marry a farmer. <laughs> unless, unless he had loads of money. <laughs> I've nothing against farmers, no. Good. Nothing in the world against them. <laughs> Would I? I don't think so. I don't mind now if it's to be like, you know. Uh, I'll accept it, but if as well, but um, city life, I'm mad about it at present anyhow. I, I have no objections if I had to get married, yeah, if I was getting married to a farmer, it wouldn't worry me if it was a farmer or not. Well, I would like it, I think I would like it anyway, but I would like to be fairly near a big town and I would like to have a car if possible. I'd love to live on a farm, I'd be born and reared on a farm, I'd love to live on a farm. I think I would like to go back to living in the country, as the country, in a small country town but not maybe the farm, it's something different again. I haven't thought about it. I don't think I would like it. I've got you to stop them. Of course, there's always Liz Doon. Among the holiday resorts of Ireland, Liz Doon Varna occupies a rather special place. Its high season is not in July or August, but in September, when the haymaking and the harvesting are over, and the farmer can think of taking a few days off. The holiday makers arrive on Saturday evening, but the holiday doesn't really begin till after Mass on Sunday. The men are the first out of the church, and they line up across the road to wait for the ladies. For some, this is just normal curiosity, but for others, it's the first step in a traditional ritual, an elaborate mating dance whose origins go back further than anyone can remember. But the fact of the matter is that Liz Doon Varna has come to be regarded as the marriage market of rural Ireland. Originally, Liz Doon Varna owed its fame as a holiday resort to its spa. And even today, many people come here principally in order to take the waters. The sulphur water is supposed to be particularly effective for rheumatism and is much in demand among the older visitors. Most of them can remember the day when marriages were arranged by the local matchmaker. This had many faults as a system, but it did succeed in getting people married. One of the difficulties in a rural area is the small choice available to a man or woman who's looking for a life partner. And this is where the matchmaker with his wide range of contacts could perform a real service in bringing suitable people together. Today, the old-style matchmaker has been forced out of business by changing fashions and ideas, and he's left a gap which is not too easy to fill. So Liz Doon Varna in September has become almost as famous as Paris in the spring. It provides a place where people can meet some new faces and rekindle some old hopes. While the older people drink their mineral waters or sit in the sunshine, there's music and outdoor dancing for the young folk, or indeed for anyone, young or old, who has not yet definitely decided to opt out of the matrimonial stakes. Well, 
I heard a lot about it, I tell you the truth, and um, heard a lot of girls down here and so forth, you know. So I said I'd come and see what it's like. I just felt a bit of crack. And we meet some nice girls and good life. And we, I like dancing. Well, I heard it was, it was good crack here and that you could enjoy yourself. And there's plenty of energy and men here. Well, sure, I'm coming for a man. I heard all about it, so I just said I'd chance it. What did you hear? Putting out all stops. <laughs> you get your breakfast maybe around 10 o'clock or 11, and uh, then you could come down to the spas here and you get some sulfur water to drink and you dance till lunchtime, you know? And then um, you go back and get your lunch and um, you um, go back down out to the castle, there's dancing there until 7 o'clock this evening. Drink and have a dance and it's all dancing like. And then you stay out about 7 o'clock and you come back in for your tea. So it's about 9 o'clock can you have your tea over and uh, you go out then to other places, you know? <laughs> The dance floors at Lisdoon Varna take the place of the old-time matchmaker and do his job at least to some extent. So do the various dance halls that are scattered throughout the countryside. But there are many people who through shyness or age or other reasons are unwilling to go to dances. And so in recent years the art of matchmaking has begun to revive in the West. But with an important difference, the matchmaker is not a local farmer but a local priest. What does she say when you're introduced? Come out here, you two lads, <laughs> One priest who's taken a special interest in the problem is Father Michael Keane of Kilkerrin, County Galway. At the marker meetings in the schoolhouse, he encourages boys and girls to mix together, and he even gives them hints on etiquette. This is the... Yeah. PJ, I want you to meet Carmel Dibley. She's a member of the... Oh, did Carmel, uh, don't... Uh, no, I don't. Don't be rare to get out his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, be poised. I want you to get a little bit of poise for us. No. Right. Yeah. PJ, I'd like to meet Carmel Dibley. She's secretary of the Kirtel. What the hell? Carmel, this is PJ Monaghan. <laughs> 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 I should dance. The gentleman asks the lady very politely to dance. She just says, may I have the pleasure of this dance? Takes her out, dances with her, and leaves her back again to where he got her. Then he thanks her for the pleasure of the dance. Okay. Now... A little bow would be no harm, you know. Right. Father Keane is known locally as the Cupid of the West. He was the driving force behind the setting up last year of the Knock Shrine Marriage Bureau, which operates an introduction service for Connacht.